Hello everybody, welcome back. So here we are now, 15.1c. This is our third now multilinear regression problem where these exercises are really, I think, familiar extensions to what we did in module 14. The next exercise is module 15-2. Things will change a little bit. But this one is going to be very similar to those that we have already done. So let's just jump into it. And again, we'll go through, we'll find our unique path from this somewhat challenging, maybe starting point, and we'll find our unique path through to completion. So let's get into this one. We have a belief that an individual's salary can be predicted by their age and by how much experience they have. So here's our regression equation, salary, which is measured in thousands of dollars and years of experience and age, of course, those are measured in years. Okay, so we have once again a partial output. Our first task, of course, is to fill in the blanks and get that estimated regression equation. So as always, I start at the top. I know, because I've seen it happen to so many students over the years, that often what happens when students see a problem like this is they just they, they look and they look and they don't know they don't know where to start. It's just it's oh my goodness, what is this? What am I supposed to do with this? And it can be overwhelming if you're looking at the whole thing all at once and you've got all these empty spaces that you need to fill. So I always find it's good practice, no matter what the question, start at the very top and just go through line by line. Can I get this one? Can I get this one? Can I get this one? Once you find that you can get one, then go back up and see if it helps you solve any of the ones that you've already skipped over. And then, so kind of an, an iterative process, right? Very, very um, black and white, right? Going just line by line by line. So if I go through these regression statistics, there's nothing there. I've got nothing to work with uh, in that first table. Um, I can't even, I have no information about the number of observations even. So, okay, I'm just gonna skip over regression statistics. There's nothing there. I get to the ANOVA. I, okay, I can do degrees of freedom because those calculations, well, they, they don't change. The, the formulas for those, they're reliant on the model, right? K minus one. And here I have the model. So here I can see that K is equal to one, two, three, right? I'm estimating three coefficients. K is equal to three. So three minus one, I have two. Well, I can actually just go ahead and finish off that row because I have the sum of squares regression. And so with that, I can get my mean squared regression. So that sum of squares, that's 11, 72, 14, 18, 0.63 divided by two. So that gives me my mean square is 5, 8, 6, 0, 7, 0, 9, 0.32. Okay, so now I've got that one down. Now I could go to the next row. I've got a couple of options here. I can figure out what residual is, my, my error, because I have degrees of freedom total is 29. And of course that's n minus one. So if n minus one is 29, and of course, my degrees of freedom for 29, it must also equal to the sum of everything above it, right? Well, the sum of everything above it, 29, uh, what plus two is gonna be equal to 29? Well, this must be 27, right? And that's the N minus K. So 27 plus two is 29. N minus one, if that's 29, my observations must be 30. So there I've got my degrees of freedom. Now I can also go back to the first row, not the first row, the second row, and I can use this information here, that MSR combined with the F statistic 
to solve for MSE because I know that that F is just the ratio of MSR over MSE. So that's 55.9 is equal to MSR divided by MSE. Well, so I can solve for MSE it is 55.9 times, nope, I made a mistake. It's 586.0709.32 divided by 55.9. So that gives me MSE is 10, oh, 104.842.74. So there I have MSE. I've got its degrees of freedom. So I know that MSE is SSE divided by its degrees of freedom. So I can use that relationship now to solve for the sum of squares. So that's 104,842,74 times 27, 2,830,753,98. And now I can solve for SST. I'm just going to add those together. 1172, 1418. And that gives me SST. 14, 552, 172.61. So there's that complete ANOVA. Now at this point, you guys have done so many ANOVAs, whether they're module 15, module 14, module 13. I hope that you've had lots of practice with those because the relationships between all of those values, they're the same. You know, with the exceptions of randomized block and factorial, there's some similarities, but yes, those are a little bit different. Okay, so let's get into our next, actually, let's go back up because now we can fill in our regression statistics because, again, that's standard error. This is equal to the square root of MSE. So MSE I have is 104,842.74. So our standard error is 323.79. We can get our R squared. That R squared is the ratio SSR over SST. So I've got all of that in my ANOVA divided by SST. That R squared is 0.8. With the R squared, I can get the multiple R because the multiple R is the square root of the R squared. So I just take the square root of that and I have 0 0.90. Moving along, now I can get the adjusted R squared is one minus, one minus the R squared times N minus one over N minus K. So this is one minus 1 minus 0 0.8, 30 minus 1 over 30 minus k here was 3. So that's 0 0.2 times 29 over 27. That gives me my adjusted r squared of 0 0.79. Okay, finally, let's finish off our coefficients and standard error, all of these things for that estimated regression equation. So where should we begin here? I've got a coefficient, I've got a test statistic. Well, here I can take advantage again of this relationship between those three values. So I've got the test statistic, 0 0.47, that's the coefficient divided by that standard error. So if I want to solve for the standard error, 199.73 divided by 0 
and that gives me a huge standard error, huge relative to the size of the coefficient of 424.96. We can get that interval now, once again, using this formula. You've probably seen, if you've watched the other videos, that pretty well everything in this section, in this table, can be solved by one of these two relationships, right? Here I have that point estimate, 199.73, plus or minus that critical T, which I need for maybe all of them, because it's the same for all of them, that critical T for this exercise, so these are 95, so that's 0.025, N minus K up here, that was 27 degrees of freedom. So if I come down to my T tables, there's 27 degrees of freedom, and there's 0.025, so I'm gonna come down here, there's that critical T, 2.052. 2.052 times that standard error. Well, we just solved for that. 424.96. Okay, we can get our lower and upper limits. That point estimate, 199.73 minus 2.052 times 424.96. Big negative, 672.29. And the upper limit, 199.73 plus 2.052 times 424.96. That's a huge interval due entirely to that large standard error. And so again, here we see something that we would expect. Small t stat large p-value, right, if that t-statistic is the closer it is to zero, the larger is that p-value, and that large p-value is consistent with an interval that crosses a zero. So everything here makes sense. It's good to double check things because you can spot, you've got enough experience, you've done enough practice now, you can probably spot something that, hey, uh, that doesn't seem right, that, that interval should cross zero, so I screwed up somewhere, right? So you can kind of use your knowledge of these things to confirm, double check your work. Okay, getting into age, I see I have a standard error and I see I have a lower limit for that interval. So what can I do here? Well, again, I'm gonna use this, this relationship. I know that that lower limit, 2979, came from that coefficient minus 2.052, right, because they all use that same critical T times that standard error, 3.84, right? We're looking at this one here. So I can use that to solve for that unknown coefficient. So I have 2879, that's a negative, plus 2.052 times 30.84. And so that solves that coefficient on age is 34.49. Now I can get that T statistic because that's just the coefficient divided by that standard error. So divide that by 30.84 and I have a T stat of 1.12. I can get this upper limit. I have the magnitude of that margin of error, right? I have this margin of error now because that point estimate 34.49, that lower limit is 28.79. So I have that margin of error, 34.49, 28.79. Is 63.28, which means this is 63.28, and so that upper limit is 97.77.
And once again, I have an interval, it crosses zero. That's consistent with a large p-value. Everything's working out. Finally, last one, this one. I'm sure we could go about this one a couple of ways. Let's do that interval first because I can see there I've got the size of the margin of error for that one because we have the point estimate here is given to us as 14.9 and the upper limit is 74.09 so that margin of error 7409 minus 14.9 that margin of error is 5919 which means this must also be 5919 so if I take 14.9 minus 5919, my lower limit is negative 4429. And once again, we're crossing that zero threshold, consistent with a large p-value. Everything's working out. Everything is consistent. Now, I need that standard error. I'm going to come back here, use this relationship. I have my coefficient, well no, here I have my t-stat is 0.52, that is equal to 14.9 divided by that standard error. I could also actually use this relationship here to solve for the standard error as well. So I've got options, then you choose whichever one is easiest for you, 14.9 divided by 0.52. That is a, again, another large standard error, which is why we have a small t-stat, which is why we have a large p-value, which is why we have a, a, a interval that crosses zero. So that's it. We're doing these somewhat faster. Of course, here I have only two independent variables. No problem. Okay. I'm going to cut this video here and we'll come back again and as always consistent format as before I'll produce another video to to discuss parts B, C, D and then a third video for a little bit more discussion similar to what we talked about at the end of problem 15 1B. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Hope this was helpful. Bye.